In this presentation, we will continue on with our comprehensive problem for the payroll register going to our second pay period, that being September. We have our first pay period here of August. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're going to continue with that information for September. Note that we don't have another header line down here before the September data input sheet. What we're going to do is we're just going to freeze the pane, which is going to be an Excel kind of trick or technique that we're going to use. And that's going to make it so this cells above this line will stay the same. Now, before doing that, I'm going to scroll all the way to the left and then I'm going to scroll down just a little bit because I don't really need to see these two rows when we freeze the pane. These two rows, I'm going to scroll down just till we just see this header here. And once we do that, I want to put my cursor right above the header and all the way to the left. So you want your cursor in A4, uh, A4. Then we're going to go to the View tab up top. We're going to go to the Windows Groups. These are the groups. We're going to go to Freeze Panes. Select Freeze Panes and then we will freeze the pane. Pane has been frozen. No more pane, it's frozen. And then we're going to scroll back down and you'll notice that the top rows will stay the same. Now, just to get perfectly down there, if I, if I scroll down with my scroller, it takes, it goes too far and I want one more row to do that. I'm just going to go down here and just click one more time and that'll give us on our, on our tab here. So it takes a little while to get used to that freeze panes. Once you have it, it, it can be useful depending on the worksheets that we are using. Okay, so we're going to go a little bit faster this time. We're going to use the similar information. Note that uh, the, so if, if we go too fast, go back to the prior uh, pay period and it'll be much the same. That's what's great about accounting and payroll. It's going to be much from, <laughs> the same from period to period once we do this a few times, especially if we're working with the same company. So we can get this information is going to be exactly the same. If I scroll back up, in other words, the marital status and the number of exemptions won't change unless they're changed with an updated W-4. So typically I can even just copy these. I can right click, copy, and go down here and just say that those are pretty much the same right click and paste. We're not gonna make any adjustments in this problem to the number of allowances. Typically they'll be pretty much the same for most employees unless again, they make a change to the number of allowances or you know someone gets married or, or stops being married. <laughs> so then now we're gonna go through and we're gonna enter the number of hours. So for Anthony Moore, we're going to say it has uh, 163 hours for the month of September. The rate is going to be the same as the prior month, 25. The regular pay then, we're just going to go straight through and calculate this. Everything that's the same, we won't put as much detail into the, to it. We'll do it right in Excel here. We're going to say this equals the 163 hours times 25, the rate now note if I hit enter, it'll go down to the one below it. If I hit tab, it'll go to the right side, which is what we want. So I usually get in the practice of hitting tab, it goes to the right. We're gonna say that there's three hours of overtime. And again, these hours in the overtime, we would have to calculate uh, by a timesheet or a time clock. So I'm giving you this data that we would have to compile through whatever time um, in instrument we're using as some kind of punch in, punch out time clock system. So we're not, uh, so there's three hours. Also note that the hours are, are uh, overtime would have to be calculated. However, that is done typically 40 hour work weeks. Anything over 40 hours would have to be overtime. I'm gonna give us the overtime hours here just for the purposes of the problem. So uh, that means that there's 163 plus three or 166 total hours, three of them overtime, 163 regular time. The OT rate is going to be the regular rate times time and a half. So this equals the 25 regular rate times one the time 0.5 and a half. So that's 150% of the regular rate 
tab. That's going to be 3750. Then we're going to take the hours, overtime hours, times the overtime pay rate. So this equals the uh, three hours times the 3750 pay rate tab. Now I'm going to add up the total columns or the total earnings, which is going to be the regular plus the OT. And that's going to equal the regular in F12 plus the OT in I12 and tab. Now we're going to go through and pick up the um, earnings for OASDI, FUTA, and SUTA. Now note OASDI, no one's going to hit the limit yet because it's only the second pay period and that's pretty high limit for the, for the wages we're talking here. So no one's hit that, so it's going to just be equals the same. Now remember that this number could differ from total earnings if uh, there was some uh, pre-tax deduction which could include cafeteria plans for the insurance. So just note that if this was a qualified section 125 plan, which we're going to say it's not for the purposes of this problem, then we could uh, reduce uh, FICA or FIT, federal income tax, social security, OASDI, uh, and uh, the Medicare tax for it. But we're going to say this is a post-tax non-section 125 deduction will be coming out of the paycheck, but is not going to be something that's going to be reducing the taxable earnings for FIT, OASDI, and Medicare. FUTA, however, uh, is an area of difference here. FUTA, we picked up the same number, but we wanted, there's a 7,000 cap. So if I go over to the, the earnings schedule for like Anthony, because it's only the first month, the cumulative earnings are just the first pay period's earnings. So it's really just this 4,025 is the only earnings in the prior month. But if there were more than one pay period, we'd have to go back here, not just to the prior month and see how much has been earned. So that means that uh, we need the lesser of what he got paid this time period or what takes us up to the cap of 7,000. So in other words, to get to the cap here of 7,000, 7,000 minus this uh, 4025 means that there's only, we can only have 297 of wages. If the wages he was paid is greater than that, we have to pick up the 297 and not go over the 7,000 cap. So let's, I'm scrolling back to the left. We're going to go back down. Well, let's keep this so we can see this data. So we can pick up that same number here since there's only one pay period. So we could say he got paid this time more than that amount. So it was 2,000 something. So we're going to do a subtraction problem. So it's going to be 7,000 minus what he got paid to date, which is just this one pay period. So he needs another uh, 2,937.50 to get up to the 7,000. This plus this now being the cap out for his life of 7,000 or of, of the company's income, the life of the company income. We're going to do the same thing for Suta, except the cap is 8,000. So again, if, if whatever he needs to get up to 8,000 is less than what he got paid, then that's what we need to pick up, which it is. So we're going to say this equals the 7,000 minus what he got paid prior. And that's going to be the 2,000. Uh, I'm sorry, 8,000 should be 8,000 equals 8,000 minus what he got paid prior. And that's going to be the 3,937.50. Okay, so that's going to be the new thing. This is basically the new thing this time. And when we go to the next pay periods, we'll, 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 we'll see that this basically goes down to zero. So now we're going to do the payroll taxes. So we're going to scroll to the next item. So we are in N12. I'm going to scroll back down so we're, we don't get confused on what we're calculating. So here we are. We're on the OASDI. We're going to pick up the OASDI wages times 6.2 or 0.062. So this equals pointing to the 4,187.50 times 0.062 and tab. Then we're going to go to the Medicare HI. We're going to say this equals and we're going to point to the total earnings because there's no cap so we don't need a medicare wages times 0 0.0145 what i missed the one <laughs> 0 0.0145 so 0.0145 tab and then the fit this is going to be where we need to go to the table again so i'm going to scroll back to the left 
Note that when we look up the federal income tax, the FIT, within the table, we will be using total earnings, which isn't exactly correct. We should be reducing it by the 401k plan because that's going to be a pre-tax calculation for federal income tax. So in that case, we're using a number here that's going to be a little too high when we look up the table. The result of that would be that uh, we're, re we're going to be withholding a little too much. And if that were to happen, uh, then uh, at the end of the year, when the 1040 is filled out, we'd have too much withholding, which would typically uh, result in a higher uh, refund or a lesser tax owed at uh, the end of the year at the 1040 calculation. Now it's going to be married four, and the wages are going to be 4,187.50. Uh, so we're going to go back here. We're looking for the tables for married monthly four and the wages are 4187 uh, so monthly married we're scrolling down 4001 uh so it's going to be between here and here so i'm going to go over to the four and there it is so this one eight one eighty seven one eighty seven yeah i think that's it so i'm going to go back here and note, note that, again, most of the time, most people aren't going to calculate this FIT manually like this, but it's nice to do from time to time so you can see kind of the complications of it. The computer will typically do a better job and make a less likely to make an error in this area. Note if we do make an error on the FIT, it'll, uh, it'll wash out basically the refund. You should get a greater or lesser refund uh, on the on the end of it when uh, we do the the four one the uh, 1040 for the individual. So when they do their 1040, they should get the refund or perhaps have to pay if there's an error involved in it. If it's an SI, if it's an error involved in the OASDI or the Medicare, we have possibly more of a problem in some cases because it won't, uh, it may not be refunded when the taxes are done and therefore we would have to amend that but these two it's less likely to make an error because they're very easy to calculate okay so we're going to go to the insurance we're back to the insurance here it's just going to be the same we're going to give uh the insurance number and the insurance number will be i'm just going to pick the same up from last time last time it was this number tab the union dues are going to be the same tab the 401k is going to be the same so tab and again those will be dependent on the conditions then i'm going to scroll back down so let's see this i know i'm scrolling around a bit and then we're going to do the net pay which is going to be the total earnings minus all the deductions so oasdi hi fit uh, group union and 401k we'll do that with a formula this equals the total earnings minus the sum double click the sum function and we're going to pick up the OASDI all the way to the 401k shift zero and close it up and so there we have it so here's the gross pay minus all this stuff gives us the net pay now we're going to do the employer calculations and the employer taxes for OASDI same it's going to be the same amount but I like to do the calculation again kind of a double check I guess going to be this 4,187 times 0.062 and that's going to be the 259.67 uh, 63 which is equivalent to here we'll do the same for the HI which is Medicare so this is going to equal scrolling back over the total earnings times so you go back over so we can see it times 0.0145 that's going to give us the 60, which should match what we have here. And then the FUTA, we got to take the FUTA wages, which is different than what we calculated in the last uh, pay period. That's going to equal this 2,937.50 times 0 0.006 tab. And then SUTA, which is going to equal the SUTA wages. If we scroll back over, which is this one in M12 times 0.054 and enter. And so there's gonna be that information. Now we'll do the same thing for the next employees. I'm gonna scroll back over all the way to the left. We've got Sandy Lewis, married four, 
We're gonna go through our hours here. We're gonna say that the hours were 161 this time. We're gonna have the same pay rate of 28 per hour. Multiplying out the regular pay is going to equal in F13, this 161 in D13 times the $28 uh, an hour and tab. Then we're gonna get the overtime hours, which will be one, we have one overtime hour. We'll calculate the overtime rate again, which is gonna be equal to the regular rate times time and a half, times 1.5, 150%. Tab, then the overtime pay is gonna be the one times 42. We obviously can do the math in our head, but we're gonna calculate it so we have the same formula, the one hour times the 42 equals G13 times H13, tab. Then we're gonna add up for total earnings, the regular pay and the overtime pay. So NJ13 equals the regular pay in F13 plus the overtime pay in uh, I13, tab. Then the OASDI wages, no one's gonna have hit that uh, one, or they're not gonna have hit that one uh, 28,400, so it's just going to be the same, equals that same number. The We're going to have the same issue with the 7,000. They will have hit that. So what we need to do is just get the enough wages to get to 7,000. It's not going to be the full 4,550 for FUTA wages. We need whatever it is to get to the 7,000, which will be less than this amount. We'll do that with a subtraction problem, which will equal the 7,000 minus the prior period's wages, because that's what it was up to this date. There's only one prior period. And that's gonna be 2,573, meaning this plus the prior period equals the 7,000, which is the cap. So we can't use the whole amount because it capped out. Same thing with SUTA, except there's an 8,000 cap. So equals 8,000 minus the prior period SUTA, 4,424 tab, then this number plus the prior period goes to the cap of 8,000. So we can't pick up the full number here. We have to pick that up. I'm gonna scroll back down so we can see our headers better. And we'll go through the uh, OASDI. So this equals the OASDI wages times 0.062 tab. The HI or Medicare equals the total earnings because there's no cap times 0 0.0145 and then the FIT so we're gonna have to scroll back over and we'll find that FIT for Sandy Lewis M married for monthly pay period uh, the amount that we're looking up is 4,400 uh, 4,550 so if we scroll back over here we're looking for our tables which are here and we're looking for the married monthly the 4550 so here's 4550 now that one falls on the line here typically we'll do the higher amount so we want the higher amount uh, because that'll withhold a little bit more and that's like a little bit more conservative we'd rather have a refund in other words at the end of the year when they do the 1040 than to owe money so we're going to try to err by withholding a slightly too much than too low although the dollar amount's probably pretty minor. So here we have uh, the 235. We'll go back to our table and we're gonna put in, scrolling back over to the FIT, 235. Group insurance, I'm gonna say that's the same. So we're gonna pick that up. And again, this would this could vary. I mean, this could differ depending on the terms, but I'm gonna pick up the same for the union dues. I'm gonna say the 401k is gonna be the same. It may vary depending on the, the earnings, but we're just gonna keep the, a standard or fixed 401k contribution. It just depends on um, the options that were, were agreed upon between the employer and employee and the plan. Then we're gonna do the net pay, which is gonna be the total earnings minus all the deductions and taxes. So this equals the 4,550 minus the sum double clicking the sum function, highlighting the OA, OASDI to the 401k tab. It's gonna close up, that's good. So there's our net pay. So there is the net pay. Now we'll calculate the, the employer taxes. So OASDI should match this amount, but I like to recalculate it. So we're gonna say this equals the OASDI wages 
times 0.062, which will be that same 282, 282. The HI or Medicare equals, and we're gonna scroll back over, it's gonna be for the total amount here, times, and then it's gonna be the 0 0.0145 tab. And then the FUTA, we're gonna say equals the FUTA wages, which will be this amount in L13 times 0 0.006 tab. And then the SUTA will equal the uh, SUTA total in N13 times 0 0.054, enter. I picked up the wrong number there, so let's delete that going to equal, we're going to scroll over just one more to find the SUTA number, times uh, 0 0.054. All right, so that looks, that looks more reasonable. Next employee, scrolling back down, we're looking for Jill. And so Jill here has a single one and 140 hours on regular pay. And the hourly rate is 31. Regular pay will equal the hours of 140, the normal regular hours, times the $31 an hour. And then we're gonna have the overtime. We're gonna say that there was zero overtime. Overtime rate will still calculate it even though there's not any overtime to keep in conformity with our formulas. Equals the 31 regular rate times time and a half or 1.5, 150%. And then the overtime pay then, we're still gonna calculate it even though it's zero equals the zero hours times the 4650 overtime rate. Then the total earnings is, we're still gonna calculate both numbers even though there's only a regular pay equal to the regular pay plus the overtime pay. Then the OASDI, they're not gonna hit over, Jill hasn't hit the overtime yet for, uh, hasn't hit the OASDI cap yet. Therefore, this is just gonna be the same number. Tab, uh, the 7,000 will have hit the 7,000. So same thing on the 7,000, we're gonna say this equals the 7,000 minus the prior time period, tab. And so the prior time period is what, they, what she has year to date in earnings, plus uh, the current time that makes it the 7,000, therefore we're gonna pick that number up instead of the wages here. Same thing for the SUTA, except for the 8,000 cap, so it's gonna equal 8,000 minus the SUTA wages from the prior time period, time, our tab, <laughs> that's gonna be 2,590. This plus the prior time period is that $8,000 amount. Then we're gonna have the OASDI, so I'm gonna scroll back down, the OASDI, will equal the OASDI wages times 0 0.062 tab. The HI or Medicare will equal the uh, total earnings times 0 0.0145. Then the FIT, we're gonna use our tables again. It's gonna be single, one, and 4,340. So going back to our tables, we gotta scroll up to the single table. So married, this is a single table monthly, and we're looking for 4,340, and the one column is here. So 4,340 is gonna be in between here, and the one column is this one, because that first column is a zero column. So that's going to be uh, 491. Wait a second, that's 4405. It's actually 4340 we're looking for. So 4325 to 43. It's going to be between this column, which I believe is that 474 that we want. Yeah, that 474. So we'll go back to our Excel worksheet. We're going to pick up that 474. I'm going to scroll back over. FIT will be 474. Group insurance, we're gonna say that's the same as the prior period. So I'm gonna just say that's the same. No union dues. 401k, we're gonna say that's the same just to keep this simplified. And then the net pay. So we'll calculate the net pay. That's gonna equal the total earnings minus the sum 
double click the sum function of the OASDI to the 401k. Then we're going to close that up. That's fine. Okay, and then we want the OASDI for the for the employer. Recalculating it equals the OASDI times 0.062. That's going to be the 269, which should match here. And then when the HI is going to equal the HI wages, which is going to be just the total. Scrolling back over times 0.0145 tab. Then we have the FUTA, and the FUTA will equal, I'm going to scroll back over to the FUTA wages, which is at uh, L14 times 0 0.006 tab, and then the SUTA, which will equal, scrolling over to the SUTA times 0 0.054 and enter. Next one, we're going to scroll back over. Last employee, uh, married three. We're going to say this is a salaried employee. So this time we're just going to say salary uh, for the regular pay. Actually, we're going to say salary for the uh, regular hours. And we're going to say that it's 35,000. And the total earnings is just going to be the same. So we'll just say that equals the same amount. Now the OASDI, she's going to get a lot closer here because uh, she's got that 35,000, but she's not there yet. She's at, I mean, if we look at the earnings so far, 35,000 and then the 35 is the 70. So we got to obviously be careful here on the OSDI. She'll be the first one or the only one that will possibly hit that cap. It hasn't yet though, so it's still the 35. And then the FUTA already hit the FUTA here. So there is no FUTA. So it's gone and it's going to be gone for the rest of the time period. So th this always happens in the, in the early periods or the early payroll periods. The food is going to be everything and then it's going to fade away. Uh, and then obviously if we, if we weren't monthly, if we were something other than monthly, then it would fade away a little bit more slowly. If we pay people weekly rather than monthly, but uh, it, it's going to go away after the first quarter or the first quarter and a half typically for most employees. Okay, and then we're going to say the OASDI will equal the OASDI wages times 0 0.062 tab. And then the HI or Medicare will equal the 35,000 times the 0 0.0145 tab. And then the FIT, now it's going to be the same. Uh, we can do the calculation again, uh, but well, let's take a look at it. If we scroll back over here. I'm going to scroll back up and we we have to use these tables up top so we'll do this at least one more time we might not do it next time it's gonna it should be the same but we'll take a look at this percentage calculation and uh, so we got to go all the way up past these tables because the tables are not uh, gonna have enough numbers in order to calculate this it won't be high enough to calculate the wages now remember what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll back up top and we're going to pick up this number first. So 345.80. So 345.80 times three, because she has three exemptions. So this number, this 1037.40, is what we're going to decrease the total earnings of 35,000 by to then use in the table. So this minus, minus, the 35,000 is 33,962. If we scroll down to the correct table now, that's the number we're going to use at 33,000 or so. We want to find the monthly payroll table. And we're going to find the 33 is going to land in between here, in between these two numbers. So we, we're going to say 5,348 plus 32% over the floor, which is going to be this 27, right? This first number, the 27 here, 27. So if we take out the calculator here, what we're really doing is we're saying, how much is actually in between this, this section? Well, we said it was 33,962.60 minus the floor of, of this category, which is 227.213. 
means that there's 6,749.60 within this range, and that's the 32% range. So times 0.32, that's how much is gonna be taxed at the highest 32%. And then we're gonna to add to it what was in there before from prior brackets, which we can calculate from the floor already, which is gonna be uh, plus this 5348.26. So that's gonna be that 7,508. So I'm gonna go back over here and we'll see the formula for, I'm, all I'm gonna do is copy the formula. So if we scroll here, the formula is here. I'm going to copy this and just put that full formula, right click and paste one, two, three. So I just right click and copy, right click and paste. And then let's just take a look at it. If we double click on it, it looks really complicated here because we don't see the subtotals. Uh, so it's almost easier to calculate this, not in this kind of fashion, but uh, we can do it this way. And it's, it's nice to be able to see so what we're taking is this 35,000 minus the exemption amount of uh, 345.8 times three, because there's three exemptions. So because of the order of operations, it's gonna multiply first and then subtract. And then it's gonna take this bracketed number, whatever we get there, and say that's minus the floor number, 27,213. And, it, and then it's gonna take that, it's gonna be really the number we calculate this whole thing at the highest bracket of 32% times 32%, then plus the 5,348, all other brackets added up. So that's gonna be that number. Then the group insurance, same thing as the prior month. So we'll just say that equals the 1,500. Nothing in the union uh, dues. And then the 401k will be the same. And so the net pay, I'm going to scroll back down a little bit, will equal the uh, total earnings minus the sum, double clicking the sum, highlighting the OASDI to the 401k tab. And we're going to say yes, that's what we want. And then the OASDI should be the same here, but I'm going to recalculate it equals the OASDI wages times point, point oh six two tab, and then the HI or Medicare, and note this number matches this number, equals, we're gonna scroll all the way over to the, this 35,000 times point oh one four five tab, and that number should match this number, and then the FUTA equals, I'm going to scroll over to the FUTA wages and it's zero times the 0 0.006 and then the SUTA wages, which is also going to be zero times 0 0.054. So there we have uh, those numbers.